very much, Team A. Get a drink of water there. A little bit tongue-tied, it appears. So, at the end of the day, Team Ice come out victorious. It went all the way down to the wire, all the way down to the very last 1v1. Yeah. Before we get to that, let's break down the very first matchup. It was Archie, of course, taking on Shy. A Varus versus Quinn battle. And it definitely appears as though a bird, bird, bird. Bird is the bird. <laughs> Quinn came out on top. Freak, what yeah. do you think? Uh, so he definitely wasn't shy about all inning all the time. Uh, right. The the level one all in was not worth it because at first I was like, oh, Varus is a great pick against Quinn because Quinn has to all in and get into the minion line and pulled minion aggro doing that and that was a really bad mistake by by shy. But he pulled it back and the thing is, Quinn is like the best duelist of the AD carries and so if you get to the point where someone is out of position, you can train that person down and that's exactly what happened. Like Vault and Blind are both really good in that kind of matchup and. It played out that way. Yeah, Vela's burst was definitely helping out. Right, the next matchup was, of course, uh, a Lee Sin versus Lee Sin duel as Cool took on QTV. It did look like Lee Sin was able to restore sight to the blind monk, beating QTV and earning a point for his team, keeping him in the game. What, was, what do you think of that, Grepper? Uh, bad puns. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just, I just wanted to note, I mean, it's a Lee Sin matchup going both ways. It's killed a little differently, and that's all interesting. The most interesting part for me was that QTV was running X Frequence, because we were all sitting here like, oh yeah, he's going he's gonna to hit level 2 now, and he's, he's going to get wrecked, and suddenly like, QTV hits level 2 first, and you're like, how, how is that possible? Because <laughs> he must have been running X Frequence there. Yep. Uh, sadly enough, he didn't push the first wave to really make, because he could have traded CS uh, and uh, for damage, because he would have hit level two first and just been able to all in, but he was too afraid to to lose the matchup in the, in the first level, uh, and that could have been a really interesting scenario. But yeah, Cool played it uh, really well, and he just was the better Lee Sin player. We're also talking about the fact that when he fell a little behind, probably his best option was to back spend some money yeah. and maybe just try all in. But also, he actually when he got level two, he went in and then he completely missed the Q. I think he landed in the bush or something, and that was actually his chance. And yeah, as you said, then he should have recalled. But yeah, get back to lane. Right, the next matchup was the duos of Double of the Mad Life taking on Varus and Cannon. Uh, sorry, they were playing Varus and Cannon against Diamond and Bjergsen, who were on Brand and Annie. So Team Fire, Diamond and Bjergsen, they played a thematic duo. Both of the champions were flame-based, both of them were on fire. And Madlife actually has a history against these champions. He's failed to win with them in, I believe it was OGN, and then has lost to this duo twice. Monty, uh, tell us a little bit of story about this. Yeah, this was the second loss, and it's particularly funny. I don't. I think that it was picked by Team Fire just because they're Fire champions, but this actually probably brought back a lot of bad memories for Mad Life. So back uh, a few seasons of Champions ago, uh, Frost picked a brand any bot lane as kind of a disrespect uh, against the KT Rolster Arrows and lost the game. And then what happened was in Club Masters, KT was up uh, over Frost, and so they picked the Annie brand bot lane mm -hmm. and then beat Mad Life and Wung with it. And so losing here again probably stings a little bit for Mad Life, who has a really bad history with any brand lane, strangely enough. Yeah, I, maybe it's just Stunlock. It's just CC, <laughs> doesn't it? But, but that was very close. The level one or level two engage, uh, I believe it was Diamond, just got away by the skin of his teeth, mm -hmm. almost giving the victory over to Team Ice. Uh, it was very dramatic. I've actually played it. When, uh, whenever me and Froggen used to do a queue, we'd either run like any brand or Thresh and Lee Sin. But the any brand lanes, it's really interesting. You feel like you're really powerful, but you need to wait at least to level three until you have one of each spell so you can really rely on that spell burst because you'll go all in and then you're out of ammunition and then you'll get turned on and that almost happened but yeah. they managed to survive and then get enough spells down to yeah get a con convincing victory it wasn't close at all convincing <laughs> victory i like that then of course it all came down to the very last battle the super 1v1 when froggen was playing yasuo against wei Zhao on Jarvan. now wei Zhao will simply not forgive himself as the winds were in froggen's favor as he took down the tower to fisher what did you think of that matchup well the matchup itself I actually felt was in favor of Froggen. Also because, first of all, he started Q at level 1, which I really like, because he didn't want to get in range of uh, the auto attack from Jarvan early on with the passive bonk in your head. <laughs> and also, Wei Xiao decided to build towards Brutalizer, where Froggen just went straight down his blades. So he was stronger there in the early fights, and also he could just jump around, kite around Jarvan. Kobe talked about how hard it is for Jarvan to actually hit him. And we just have to say, Froggen, he is 100% pure Danish. <laughs> and that's why he's doing so well here. <laughs> well, Bjergsen won his matchup. We'll have to see what not, the Queen says I'm about him. I'm not convinced him. yet. I'm not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So here is a final look at how teams Ice and Fire fared over the course of the All-Star Challenge. Team Fear was hot right out of the gate and took an early lead with a commanding performance in our ultra-rapid fire match. Not to be outdone, 
outdone rather, Team Ice surged forward to take the lead with wins in Hexakill and the pick 10, making the score 4-2. to two. And as uh, we just saw in the 2v2, Fire was able to pull the points back to a tie. In the Super Fun 1v1, Froggen extinguished the competition and secured the final three points and the win. We are now going to award a most valuable player of the All-Star Challenges. It is a completely arbitrary honor. It carries with it no banner, no signal, no trophy, only personal satisfaction and bragging rights. It is merely the most valuable player of the All-Star Challenge Paris 2014, as determined by a panel of one. Mitch Crepo Forspols. And if you have, have any issues with his choice or the means by which he reached it, our only defense of this is because Crepo says so. Now, can I please ask everybody at the table to raise their Crepos? We are entrusting you, you with a very great responsibility, Crepo. Who is your All Star Paris 2014 Challenge MVP? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> if Fire would have won, I would have uh, nominated Dominate, uh, not Dominate, uh, Double Lift as the MVP because he was very instrumental to all of Fire's victories <laughs> by feeding. But I really, I've, I have to hand it to Cool. He was uh, a really good, uh, really good player. He wasn't supposed to be here. He subbed in all of a sudden and then just, yeah, ISO revitalized. They started playing better. Uh, he's a really insanely sin player. So for me, he gets the MVP vote because yeah. I say so. Definitely stepped up his game. Can Didn't comment? lose a single game. I mean, he came back and just won everything, and here's his one on one as well, of course. He was actually ahead of QTV pretty much the entire time, so it's just a matter of time before he'd won on, on CS if he didn't kill him. Very exciting game. Managed to get the last hit there right at the end. And like we've rightly pointed out, coming in, you know, covering for Tsame. Yeah, and well, the funny thing as well is his team now. A oh, former team, I guess he still sub for them, is in the final as well. OMG he played. <laughs> former team, is, is he leaving OMG to join <laughs> Team Fire? I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would do so, man. They're winning everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick uh, last comment there on Cools, seeing as our yeah. OMG expert is at the end of the table. Yeah, he's awesome, right? And and the great thing about this is so he's obviously a phenomenal, like, world class individual player, and there's someone even better than him in the mid lane helming the team for the uh, final. So, you know, go OMG. Now, I do have one last uh, comment, seeing as I set this one up. To close it out, if you guys at home do have any complaints about the MVP selection or you feel somebody else should have won it, please complain to at Scumbag Crepo on Twitter. It is his choice. It is his problem. It was <laughs> him saying so. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I believe we're going to be getting ourselves set up for the final. We've had a lot of fun here at the desk with the All-Star Challenge having now wrapped up Team Ice coming out victorious. The final, the invitation is what it's all about. SKT versus OMG. Let's get some opening thoughts before we start heading towards the stage. Monty, uh, does OMG really stand a chance? Not really. <laughs> what would they need well, to do? It. What <laughs> would they need to do as, we're done here. as a few bullet points? In yeah. order to, to help overcome it. Of course, you know, they are a top team, but really the, the teams that have been most successful against SK Telecom have done so with vision control. When we really look at SK Telecom T1K as a team, they they really thrive off of creating picks and 1v1 or 2v2 uh, skirmish outplay. When you force them into a situation where they can't get that, where they don't know where you are on the map because you've been sweeping and using your pink wards effectively, they have a really hard time defending sieges and winning 5v5. Five team fights. Oh, we'll have to see if they can do that. We will be back with some more pre-game analysis in a moment or two. Right now, we're going to check in with Shox, who is standing by with the captains of both of the challenges.